The story is about Ning Fan, a dominating figure who had conquered his entire school. Ning Fan found himself in a bewildering situation. Awakening in a classroom, he was disoriented and unaware of his surroundings. Glancing at his identity card, he discovered that he had been resurrected, now burdened with the responsibility of molding young minds as the teacher of Class D. His confusion was abruptly interrupted when students from Class C barged into his classroom, demanding cigarettes from one of his students, Zhang Tianyang. Meanwhile, two students from his class discussed their misfortune of being assigned to such a class where their teacher remained silent in the face of bullying. Ning Fan gets flashbacks that the people of this world started to have special talents, and to manage these individuals, the country established an academy with teachers tasked to awaken and guide their powers. In this world, Ning Fan was the sole survivor of the Ning family, as a catastrophic incident had befallen them. Subsequently, he started drinking, causing his uncle to assign him to teach the notorious Class D, and his fiancée, Zai Yuzu, to abandon him. Ning can't resist whatever happened to the original owner of his recent body, and decides to take revenge for him. Ning punches the Class C student down, and suddenly crazy teacher system unlocks in his body, and he acquires the eyes of the known professor skill that allows him to discern the pros and cons of everything. The system informed him that he could gain reliance points through the agreement of students or teachers regarding his actions for unlocking new skills. Ning Fan checks the students' data and learns that the awakening percentage represents students' qualifications. Class D's students' awakening is less than 10%, while Class S's are higher than 60%. He also checks that Jiang Tian was originally from Class S, but his awakening suddenly dropped. Using the eye of the master on Jiang, Ning discovers that his right arm is injured, which turns into a mental obstacle causing his strength to weaken. Ning inquires about his arm, and Zhang is shocked that Ning knows about his injury because he hasn't told anyone about it. Suddenly Zhengxin, Class C's teacher, along with the student Ning Hit, enters Class D, and tells Ning to apologize for beating his student. Ning refuses to apologize by saying that the person who can make him apologize hasn't been born yet. Ning says that his student is many times stronger than Zun and challenges Zun to let their students battle. Zun accepts the challenge, though Zhang shows reluctance to fight because of his injury. But Ning advises Zhang not to bear the burden of his injured arm and ties it by borrowing a belt from another student. As instructed, Zhang emerges victorious over his opponent with a single hand. Zhang's class fellows are shocked that he actually spiked a Class C student with a single punch. Unable to believe what just happened, Zun immediately takes his student and leaves Ning's class, but while leaving, he warns Ning to wait for revenge. Zhang thanks Ning for his guidance, but Ning instructs him to save his thanks until after he heals his arm. Wai Zhu and Shi Feng request Ning to fix them also, but Cold Star tells them to shut up because she thinks Zhang was initially strong, so that's why he won the fight, and they can't compare with him. Ning understands that she wants him to instruct her too, so he tells her to relax and that he can teach with supplies and cure all diseases. Ning inspects her and finds that her spiritual power is contained in her hair, but his strength is not good. Cold Star asks Ning about her problem, but Ning says he can tell after they get to the training room and tell his students to follow him. After some while, they manage to get a free training room, but suddenly, Jai Feng, Class C's professor, and his student Song Yang arrived and told them they were taking this training room. Ning tells Jai that there is always a sequence to do things, but Jai mocks him by saying that his students can't use a summoning spell, so they should evacuate the room for them. Jai brags that his student Song Yang is a master of summoning spells, so Ning also boasts that they don't know how powerful his new student, Cold Star, is. Jai laughs at this and says Cold Star Moon is just a piece of trash, but Ning challenges him to compete because they don't believe him. Jai warns Ning not to blame him for being unmerciful and getting him humiliated in front of his students. However, Ning tells him not to be merciful because that way, they can lose honorably. The competition starts, and Cold Star and his class fellows are shocked to see that Song actually summoned two rock soldiers. Ning guides Cold Star to use her hair as a summoning medium instead of her blood because it can mega kill the opponent's soldiers. Jai and Song laugh at him because only blood can be used as a summoning medium but Ning tells her not to listen to them and do what he says. Cold Star uses her hair and summons three giant rock monsters, which Jai is shocked to see. Cold Star can't believe she perfectly summoned three rock soldiers bigger than Song's rock soldiers, and her class fellows are amazed to see this. However, Jai and Song can't think of their eye. Ning tells Cold Star to let them experience it, and she orders her soldiers to destroy Song's soldiers. Ning mocks Jai if he wants to compete again but he still can't believe that hair can increase the percentage of awakening. Cold Star wonders how Ning knows about this method. She is impressed by his teachings, 
and Ning gets 5 reliance points because of her. Jai says that Ning helping Cold Start improve a little is no big deal and mocks Ning that he can't use a basic summoning spell. Jai shows off his full strength by summoning a rock army and offers Cold Star to join his class instead of Ning's. However, Ning summons a giant rock monster army. Everyone gets awestricken to see it, and Ning orders it to take down the broken army of Jai. After achieving victory over Jai, Ning, while sitting on the remains of Jai's rock army, remembers that Jai warned him to wait and watch before he left defeated. However, Ning finds his words strangely familiar. Meanwhile, Shi Feng and Lai Zhu, as in respect, bow down to Ning, which increases his reliance points to over 100, and he unlocks a new skill, bowing down to Master. Whomever he uses this skill will bow down to him involuntarily. Cold Start criticizes them for bowing down and tells them to do anything better than this. Ning notices that her mouth is quite stubborn, so he uses his new skill on her, and while she is going to leave, she unwillingly bows down to him, which makes Lai and she feel that her bow is stellar. Following that, Ning also makes Jiang Tin bow, and the students already bowing get mesmerized by his graceful bow. Gu Zhu Wai instantly lays down to escape the bow, but she can't resist the effect of Ning's skill, and impulsively submits to his skill. After all, Ning tells them they are too courteous, don't need to do this, and can relax when behind him. On the contrary, Sun Zong, in a fit of anger, punches his desk, and meanwhile, Jai enters Class C's office and perceives that Zin also got fooled by Ning, so he offers Zin to form an alliance against Ning. Zun and Jai held a grudge against Ning, perceiving him as arrogant, and sought revenge. They decided to execute their plan under the cover of darkness. Meanwhile, Zhao Fan accidentally overheard their conversation and grew worried. However, that night, Jai and Sun intercepted Ning on his way home, claiming they were waiting for him. Ning jokingly inquired if they wanted to invite him for dinner. They cunningly responded that they did ask him to partake in something. But it was not a meal, it was a confrontation with their fists. While Ning understood their anger, he questioned whether fighting there was appropriate. Zun nonchalantly dismissed any concerns, stating that nobody in the school wished for Ning's presence and warned him to leave rather than compel them to fight. Ning comprehended their intentions, he couldn't help but inquire if they were confident they could defeat him. This question makes Zun lose his cool, and he summons a monster. They are about to take down Ning, but he immediately activates his bow down skill, compelling them to kneel before him unwillingly. At the same time, Zhao Fan arrives there to help Ning hoping she is not late but is astonished to see that he doesn't need her help. Ning, forcefully making them bow, asks them if they will continue the fight, but Xin furiously replies that he'll kill him, and Jai also cuts his hand to summon his monster by using blood. They are desperate to kill Ning, and he appreciates them for their spirit. Moreover, Jai challenges Ning to summon his rock army, and Xin also wants to see if Ning's rock army can defeat them. Ning didn't plan on using the rock army summoning skill, rather, he decided to convince them by using his most skilled tactics, so he came up with his core summoning for which his dominant didn't need any medium. Jai gets terrified by the intense energy of Ning's dominance, and in the blink of an eye, it cuts Zin's monster down in half. However, Zin can't believe his eyes. While Zin is horrified by this scene, Ning takes him down with a single blow to his stomach, and after all, they get badly defeated by him. The following day, students of Class D gossip about how Zun Zong and Jai Feng got hit and are in the hospital now. Shi Feng also heard that they got bamboozled and didn't even get the chance to see the culprit's appearance at the same time. Ning entered the class, and students greeted him a good morning. Ning takes the class attendance and asks about an absent step Chu Feng, so Zhang tells him that Chu last came to class a month ago, and they don't know the exact reason. After that, Ning starts the class and asks the students who want his help to improve their skills, to which Gu Zhu immediately raises her hand. Ning gets excited that she will ask him for help, but unexpectedly, she says she is not feeling well and asks Ning's permission to go to the nursing office. Ning allows her to go, and after she leaves, Lai and she insist Ning train them, but he tells them to study by themselves, and he disappointingly leaves for a walk. Ning goes after Gu to the nursing room, where she is waiting for her doctor to arrive, and suddenly, level B doctor Lin Kaio comes and asks Ning what he is doing there. Lin Kaio asked Gu to model for her cosplay, so she visited her by making an excuse for her illness. But now as Ning also arrived there, Lin Kaio made him take pictures of Gu. After taking enough cosplay pictures, Lin Kaio tells Gu to change her clothes. While she does that, Kaio tells Ning that Gu's percentage of awakening is low, and warns Ning to bring Gu to her if he cannot teach her. Ning used his eye of the master skill on Gu and discovered she possessed a rare body type. 
she could utilize one-tenth of ordinary people's magic and excelled in casting spells, making her suitable for high-level magic. When Lin Kaio inquired about his findings, Ning praised Gu as a genius. However, Lin Kaio found it hard to believe as Gu struggled with elemental healing magic. She considered Gu the worst student she had ever taught because she knew Gu's magic level was below average. Gu hasn't used offense magic before, but Ning puts a hand on her head and says she is an offense magician. Gu expresses trust in Ning, and Lin is shocked to hear this. Meanwhile, a student named Zhang Jing arrived, and Lin Kaio noticed her recurring fever. Ning used his eye of the master on Zhang Jing and informed Lin Kaio that her healing magic was ineffective. Lin gets offended by Ning's statement and tells him that he has no right to say she can't cure Zhang. But Ning tries to explain that he said this because he can judge that Zhang isn't ill. Lin yells at him for challenging her because she is a level B doctor, but he understands that there are some things she can't tell apart. Ning questions Zhang if she has met an obstacle before and realizes that her awakening percentage hasn't increased, and she replies that it has happened to her. Ning feels a sense of accomplishment because he identifies that Zhang feels hot because her inner spiritual fire magic is awakening. Whenever Lin tries to cure her with healing magic, she stops Zhang's awakening process. They are all astonished to hear this, and when Zhang asks Ning what she should do, he tells her not to worry because he can fix this. Zhang gets relieved to listen to this, and Ning immediately prepares a hot pot there. But Lin can't understand what he is trying to do as her mouth gets burnt because of the spice level. Gu explains to Lin that, according to Ning, he is using this method to stimulate Zhang's inner fiery magic. But Lin Kaio feels it's ridiculous that a meal in a hot pot can awaken Zhang. While she is saying this, suddenly Zhang awakening process starts and Lin gets shocked. Zhang can feel her strength has increased because she can light a fire from her hands, but Ning believes it's a shame because her awakening ability has only increased by 5%. Yet, Zhang thinks it's enough, so she thanks Ning for his help and leaves, saying she'll keep using this method to increase her awakening. Lin wonders how Zhang can improve so quickly, and Ning mocks her if she understands him now but she still thinks he is lucky with her methods. Ning says it's alright if she doesn't believe him because he only needs his students to believe in him and tells Gu to come with him so that he can open the door for her into the new world. And they leave. Ning takes her to the training site, where another teacher takes a jibe at him that he has come there to spectate. Ning asks Gu if she can hear a dog barking, but the teacher yells to him that the site is for offense magicians and they are not welcome there. Ning asks him if he is afraid that he'll wreck the area, but the teacher starts laughing to ridicule them and mock that Gu can't use simple healing magic, and she is following the footsteps of her ill teacher. Ning, with an agitated look, warns him from looking down on his students, so tells Gu to believe in him and gives her some advice on using magic. The teacher taunts that Gu's possibility of using middle-class magic is less than the possibility of him getting struck by lightning. But he gets dumbfounded when Gu displays his lighting spell skills. The teacher can't believe that Gu has awakened 10%, and she can use level 3 magic. However, Ning believes that his student's value cannot be determined through these boring numbers. He ridicules Ning by saying his worth has already been determined and he and his students are not even worth a coin. But Ning replies that he is under his foot. Professor gets mad and challenges Ning to have a duel with him. Gu gets worried and tells Ning to go back from there and not trouble themselves, but Ning decides to fight him and calms Gu by saying he has a right to fight back if his students get harassed. Ning wonders if he has helped his students increase their strength, and he has also recovered a bit, so it would be enough for him to fight him. Ning allows him to start the fight first, so he decides to make Ning regret this and attacks him with level 5 lightning magic warfare. However, after seeing this, Ning says he overestimated his power and underestimated his system. Ning instigates a level 8 lightning wrath of thunder after seeing that everyone gets flabbergasted, and he attacks him with it. Ning feels great after defeating the teacher because he has gained most of his strength back, and now he can use the system to upgrade from now on. Ning tells the offense magic students to take their teacher and scram from there, and they do so. After that, Ning assures Gu that from now on, no one will be able to bully her when he is around. Gu asks Ning if she'll ever be able to get as strong as him, so Ning motivates her that his students must be more robust than him rather than strong like him. This makes Gu emotional because no one ever trusted her like that, and Ning tells her to stop crying and they return to the class. On the contrary, Cold Start wonders why Ning has not returned because it has been such a long time since he left for a walk, and Lai thinks he must have been looking for Gu. Meanwhile, Ning and Gu arrive there, and Lai and she get mesmerized by the beauty of Gu because she is not wearing her glasses, 
but they get scared by Cold Star's reaction because she thinks she is the most beautiful in their class. On the other hand, the magic professor reaches Headmaster Ma's office and reports to him about what Ning did to him. Ma Da Shan wonders if Ning has recovered his strength because he wasn't that arrogant before, yet he decides not to let Ning rise up even if he has recovered. Ma plans to ensure that Ning and his students leave Xing Sha Academy. The following day, there was a notice on the board which reads that the academy's teaching department had made an investment promising that its equipment would be used efficiently. So from that day to next week, if a class has less than seven students, then they shall not be qualified. Jiang realizes that only his class is the one that doesn't qualify for this requirement in the whole Xing DHA Academy. And Cold Start also notices that this notice is just directed at Class D. Ning pulls the notice from the board, tears it apart, and says he'll wreck the administration's dreams. Ning calculates that his class has six students, not counting Chu Feng, and he needs one more student to qualify for the notice. Ku believes that the authorities must think no one will come to their class, so that's why they made this requirement. But Ning says that he'll take care of this issue, so he leaves to the Feng family and tells the students to practice their own. Gu goes to the training site to practice the magic skills taught by Ning, and he offers Zhang to accompany her. Cold Star also tells Lai and she to come with her for the training, but they refuse, saying they want to go with Gu, which makes Cold Star furious, and she summons her rock monsters to drag Lai and Shin with her. After some while, Ning reaches Chu's home, where his mother opens the doctor, and she is happy to see that his teacher has finally visited him. She fears that Chu is bewitched, and while she takes Ning to Chu's room, she tells him that Chu has been hidden in a box since he came back from school last month. Ning assures her that Chu is not bewitched, tells her not to worry, and closes the door after getting inside. Ning tells Chu to come out of the box, but when he doesn't respond, Ning tells Chu that he is forcing him to use violence against him. Ning pulls out the box from Chu to discover another box underneath, so he pulls out the boxes one after another until he finally uncovers Chu who has covered his face with a mask. Puzzled by Chu's actions, Ning uses his Eye of the Master and learns that Chu Feng, a magician of speed, secretly tried flying, causing him to fall. Determined to help Chu overcome his obstacles, Ning pondered a solution. Meanwhile, Chu tries to hide in the box again, but Ning catches him and removes the mask from his face. Chu hides his face with his hands and tells Ning to let him go because he thinks students that fall while running are failures and wants Ning to give up on him. Ning understands that he won't come no matter what he does, so he picks him up and throws him outside the wall. Simultaneously, Ning starts walking on the wall while Chu falls, but he suddenly gets a hold and uses flying magic to save himself from falling. Ning tells him that his flight magic has reached its last obstacle, but he lacks a position. Chu understands that Ning does this to eliminate his fear, and Ning informs him that he can fall while he runs, but he can fly. After some while, Ning plays video games while taking a ride on Chu when he is practicing flying. They almost reach the school, and Ning tells him to go down while Liang Fei, Class C's level Z professor, trains students and tells Lai Zhen to break Class C's record. Lai Zhen starts running at a fantastic speed, wondering if no one can break his record now, but suddenly Chu flying passes by him with a bullet speed tearing his clothes apart. Meanwhile, Zai Tianji reaches Xin Sha Academy, and while she and Lai are waiting for Ning to come back, Cold Star scolds them to stop waiting for him and train on their own when Zai arrives there and asks her where the academic department is. Cold Star asks him if he is not scared that someone will hit him because of his arrogant way of asking, but he replies that guys like them can't beat him. Shi Feng tries to hit him for talking back to Cold Star, but he uses a protective barrier, and she falls back because of it. Zai warns that they can't beat him, but Cold Star uses her hair and summons rock soldiers. Cold Star tells Zai not to worry because she'll not kill him, but he is confident her little rocks can't break his shield. Cold Star orders her rock soldiers to attack him, but they shatter after getting in contact with his shield, and Cold Star is shocked to see this. Zai mocks them that they can only do this and their teacher isn't much who taught them only this. Jang gets furious at him for talking like this about their teacher. Still, he challenges them to show everything their teacher has taught them. Gu strikes his shield with her lighting, but it's in vain, and when Jang tries to attack with his full strength, he also fails and wonders what is wrong with the shield. He tauntingly applauds them for their effort and tells them to call their teacher to have a match with him if they are not satisfied. But suddenly Ning arrives there on Chu and says that it seems like someone is calling him. Ning jumps down from flying Chu, but Chu falls while landing, so Ning says he'll teach him an accurate landing method next time. 
Tsai asks Ning if he is the teacher of these students and says that he hasn't taught them much, but Ning warns him that he'll make him take back his words. Gu apologizes to Ning because they failed to take him down, and Zhang informs Ning that Tsai's defense is too strong. But Ning assures him that there is no shield that can't be broken, it's just that they are using the wrong method. Tsai Tian mocks Ning to teach them the correct method, and meanwhile, Ning uses his Eye of the Master skill and identifies that Zai is a defense magician with 48% awakening. He likes to fight. After learning that Zai's weakness is his shield medium and anyone with 25% awakening can break it, Ning thinks that Zai is done now. When Shi Feng shows his injury to Ning and Lai requests Ning not to let Zai go, Zai starts laughing at them that they are Ning's poor students. Ning defends them by saying that Zai is the poor one who likes to fight but hides inside a barrier, which makes Zai furious. Ning advises Lai and Shi to fight back if they get bullied and uses his Eye of the Master on both of them. Ning discovers that Shi Feng is an expert in awareness magic, but that can't break a person's consciousness, and Lai Zhu's strength can only increase when he is unconscious and thinks that both of them are not helpful. But suddenly, he notices something and tells them to walk closer to use his Eye of the Master on them simultaneously. They ask Ning if they can become stronger, and Ning says that they can and orders them to take Zai down. Ning plans with his students about how they'll take Zai down and tells Lai and Shi to take the lead, but they think they can't defeat him even if they know his weakness. Ning tells them they can beat him by working together and instructs Shi Feng to use his erosion magic to control Lai's awareness. However, Cold Star cannot understand what Ning is doing. Lai is confident they can now beat Zai, so Shi Feng uses his erosion magic on him, and Ning suggests he manipulates Lai to fight. Lai attacks Zai's shield, and he says they can't break it, but he realizes that their strength has suddenly increased so much and wonders how it's possible. Shi Feng makes Lai attack again, and this time, they manage to break the barrier and punch Zai down. Zai can't believe this is possible because they were weak before, and while he is thinking this, Ning tells him not to give up so quickly because there is more for him. Zhang punches Zai, whereas Cold Star attacks him with her rock soldiers, and Gu simultaneously strikes him down with her lighting. Zai passes out, and Zhang wonders if they have gone too far, but Ning says it's alright. After that, Ning tells his students to go home, but while leaving, he suddenly remembers that he has forgotten about Chu. Director Ma Kai is happy because an S-class student Zai Tian has transferred to their academy. Meanwhile, Zai Tian enters his office and asks if he is the academic admin, Ma Kai Sham. Ma Kai can't recognize him because his face is wounded and he asks how dare he call him by his name, but Kai tells him that he is a transfer student. Ma Kai asks him what happened to his face, to which he replies that he accidentally fell down the stairs. Ma offers to give him a school tour, but he refuses and leaves after knowing he can join whatever class he chooses. After he left, Ma informed the recruiting officer that the S-class student had just reported and he could go to whichever class he liked. Ma feels excellent because he recruited a good student and drove away a good-for-nothing teacher. Meanwhile, Ning visits the recruitment office, where the officer gives him dropout forms for his students because his class is disbanding. But Ning tears them apart, saying that'll never happen. The officer says that no one will join his class other than blockheads. Still, suddenly Zai arrives there and says that he'll join class D. Ning says that he never said he wanted him in his class, and the officer gets shocked that he rejected Zai. But Zai is determined to join his class, so he asks Ning what he has to do to join his class. Ning requests to join his class, and he does that until Ning agrees, and the officer gets shocked to see this. The following day, Ning enters the class and asks his students why they look so dead in class, to which they point toward Director Ha, who is already present there. Director tells Ning that the number of students in his class doesn't seem to fit the requirements, but Ning decides to ignore him and start his class. However, Ma yells at him that his class is disbanded, so he should take his things and do the registration, but Ning tells him that his class is complete and is not dispersed. Ma thinks he is crazy and no one will join his crappy class, but when Ning tells him that Zai Tian, he starts laughing. Meanwhile, Zai arrives there, and Ma gets shocked to see him there, but Ning scolds him for entering at the start of the class and tells him to go out and report first. Zai immediately follows his orders, but Ma tries to convince him that Class C is the worst class in Xing Sha Academy, and he'll change him to Class S, but Zai says that he'll stay in this class. Suddenly, the recruitment officer arrives with Zai's student ID, but Ha gets mad at him for not reporting him back when Zai chooses Ning's class. Ning tells them to fight outside his class because he has to teach his students, so Ha angrily leaves and orders the recruitment officer to call the treasury director over here. Ning takes his students to the training room, and Cold Star asks him why they must keep Zai in their class, 
but Sai tells her to thank him because their class didn't disband because of him. Lai and she tease him for losing, but Chu and Gu tell them to work together from now on because they are classmates. Ning asks Zai if he remembers the place because it's the same place where they took him down, but now he'll make him climb up from where he fell. Ning decides to fix his weakness and tells him that the center of his shield is too weak, and when the opponent attacks there, it breaks his barrier easily. Ning teaches him to build a double barrier, but it involves changing the texture of the barrier. So Zai is doubtful if he can do this, but Ning encourages him to do this. Zai succeeds in creating two barriers, and Cold Star summons her rock monster to attack his shields to test it. But the rock monster breaks, and Ning gets happy that it's a success. Zai is delighted that he is the strongest in his class now, and he requests Ning to make him the strongest in the whole school. Ning tells him that there is no limit to learning and he has more to learn. Furthermore, he tells his students that all have unique abilities. They have finished the first step and have the strength of class and next, he wants to upgrade them all again. So he decides to start with Zhang Tian because he once had the power of class S, but his injury has impacted him. Ning plans to cure him, so he tells him to meet him tomorrow and leaves after dismissing the class. Meanwhile, Zhang Wen called his class B teachers in the class B office to discuss Ning. Professor Zhang Wo and Lai Jai heard that Ning fought with Class C teachers and harassed Director Ma. Professor Yun Ruo asked Zhang Wen if he called them to discuss Ning, and he replies that she is right as Ning has harassed Director Ma, so he'll be punished accordingly. Zhang Wen thinks it's the best time to ally with Director Ma, but Zhang Wo heard that Director Ma already went to look for Finance Director's help, but Zhang tells them not to worry because he has an idea. On the contrary, while relaxing at his home, Ning suddenly remembers that it's been a while since he examined his crazy professor system, so he looks in the mirror and uses the eye of the master skill on him. Ning checks that his awakening level is frozen, and he has gained the hawk eye and master calling on skills because of the reliance points from the students. He uses his 80 trust points, but his awaken level only increased by 0.8%, so he realizes he has to guide the students properly to recover, and now he can't use his skills anymore. Ning goes to the school and thinks he can gain more trust points because he has fantastic students, but suddenly, he hears some students saying that a class D student picks a quarrel with a teacher and a student of class B fighting court. Meanwhile, at the fighting court, Professor Yun Ryuo offers for Gu to come to her class because the useless Ning can't teach her, and her student Liu Min says that if he were Ning, she would have no face staying in the school. Meanwhile, Ning arrives there and says the one who told him he is still in the hospital. Yun Ryuo discovers that Ning has not recovered yet, and Ning is shocked at how she can look him out. Gu says she'll let them insult her teacher, so Liu Min challenges her to a fight, and she accepts. Ning checks that Liu has a bit of bravery and guides Gu about something, and when the duel starts, Gu immediately knocks her out with an instant strike. Yun Ruo is amazed by her speed, but she turns her powers on, saying that she underestimated Ning's students. Yun Ruo runs to attack Ning, and he gets worried because he has already used his reliance points, but suddenly, he gains 10 reliance points from Gu as she thinks that Ning's offensive spell is powerful, and he'll win. Ning immediately uses these reliance points to make a move and attack Yun with his blazing heavenly fire. Yun gets mad at his confidence and tries to attack Gu, but Ning suddenly rushes towards Gu to protect, but he doesn't have enough reliance points. However, Gu trusts him and gains more points, creating a protective barrier between him and Gu. Ning gets furious because Yun dared to attack his student, so he uses Scarlet Summoning Flame Demon, Werewolf, and Heaven God Thunder skills to attack her. Gu thanks Ning for protecting her, and suddenly Zhang arrives there and asks Gu if she is alright. Gu says she is fine, and meanwhile, Liu takes Yun and leaves from there. After they leave, Ning takes Zhang to cure his arm and locks his left arm to force him to use his injured right arm. Ning offers Gu to teach her an ice attribute offensive spell if she attacks Zhang and causes him to use his right arm. Gu immediately gets into action and attacks Zhang. Gu suddenly turns her attack into slow flakes before it hits Zhang, and Ning scolds him for what she is doing, but she replies that she can't hurt Zhang. Ning explains to Gu that they are trying to help Zhang recover his arm, so her attacks need to be more punishing. Zhang thanks Gu for her concern but also tells her to go ahead and attack him because he can handle it, so Gu strikes him again, but he can't stop them and gets hit severely. Ning gets worried that he has to try something else to cure him. Meanwhile, Yun reports to Zhang Wen that Ning has not recovered yet, and still, he uses a new skill and tells them to check themselves if they don't believe her. Zhang Wen gives a test to Zhang Wo for Class D and plans that if one student fails the test and gets expelled from Class D, it'll be disbanded. 
Simultaneously, Lin gets mad at Ning for thinking she can't cure Zhang and accidentally says she is a level S healer. Ning wonders why she said he is a level B healer and decides to use his Hawkeye skill on her. Ning identifies Lin as a level S healer and a spy from Godly Mutants Coalition while trying to heal Zhang. Lin tells Ning that Zhang has no problems and wonders if he has brought him to bother her, but Ning asks her help to accompany him to a play to cure Zhang. Lin refuses to lie to his student, but Ning blackmails her that he knows she is a level S healer from Godly Mutants, so she gets shocked and wonders how he knows about that. She tries to attack Ning to kill him because he knows about her secret, but he effortlessly stops her attacks and tells her there is no need to fight because he only needs her help to keep her secret. Lin agrees to help him, and they take Zhang to the operating room and remove the seal she created around his eyes and nose while she was talking to Ning. They tell Zhang that they'll replace his arm. After that, he can go to level S quickly. Zhang gets terrified to hear about his operation. Ning, realizing they had neglected to seek Zhang's opinion, confesses that they had already administered anesthesia and planned to feign his consent. Zhang burst into tears and fainted, but upon awakening, he discovered that his right arm was miraculously functional again. Lin cautioned him against testing his strength, fearing he might damage the surroundings. However, Zhang couldn't contain his excitement and instinctively attacked the wall causing it to break. Ning gets happy that his plan succeeded, and Zhang also thanks him for thinking that the hand they have replaced for him is incredible. Ning tells him that his hand has recovered, and they haven't changed it because they want him to believe in himself again. Overwhelmed with emotion, Zhang vowed to work diligently, promising to prove himself. Ning encouraged him to leave and not disturb Miss Lin. Meanwhile, finance director Liu Huibei visits director Ha and says he'll make Ning miserable in the academy because he messed with Ha. Simultaneously, Zhao Fan hears their conversation and wonders why Ning has provoked so many people and thinks this might be because his father called off their wedding. She decides to help Ning and leaves, but suddenly Yun Zhao arrives there and stops her. Why and she were worried as they faced an impending test because failing would result in a grade drop and suspension. Zai, however, wishes the test would prove challenging, but Cold Star, growing furious, yearned to surpass Zai and eagerly anticipated Ning's arrival. Suddenly the door opens with a bang. Ning enters the class with Zhang, but shockingly he discovers the test notice from the Class B teacher. Cold Star says that it's because Ning fought with the teachers of Class C and B that's why they are doing this to take revenge. On the other hand, Yun inquired if Zhao was there to meet Director Ma, but she refused the assumption, stating she was merely passing by. Yun questioned Zhao about Principal Zai's return from Liuoying Academy, and Zhao speculated it would take some time as her father was really into this year's competition. Meanwhile, Liu Huai comes out of the office, prompting Zhao to depart while Yun enters Director Ma's office. She reported to Ma that she used her royal eye to investigate Ning, revealing that he had not fully recovered. Ma asks what they should do next, and she suggests she has already had Zhang Wen check on him, and they would wait for the royal to decide. At the door of the training site, Liu Huai meets Ning after a long time and stops him and his students from using the training room because the equipment is under repair. Cold Start pushes Liu aside, enters the training faculty, and questions him about the other students using the equipment. According to Liu, the ones that could be used were occupied, and the remaining can't be used and tells Ning to take care of his students. Otherwise, he couldn't afford to pay for anything if they damaged the equipment. As they can't use the training room, Zhang suggests Ning make up for it with theory lessons, but Ning gets shocked to know that theory lessons are also to be tested. The students inform him that they'll have to leave the school if they fail either theory or skill assessment. Meanwhile, Zhao Fan arrives there and offers Ning her assistance in developing an idea for the training ground and equipment. Ning recognizes that she is the ex-fiancé of his body's previous owner and seems like a straight-a student. Ning instructs Zhao and his students to visit his home for tuition and the next morning, they'll have special training. After going home, Ning uses the reliance points he gained to recover his awakening, which only increases by 1% with 100 reliance points. Ning tries to test his system's effectiveness with 1.8% awakening by using Liaoyu and Skyfire, but realizes that he needs improvement. Ning was waiting for his students in Haoshan Valley when they arrived in a camper, and Ning scolded Zai for bringing it because they were not there for a picnic. Cold Star thinks a picnic is not a bad idea, and starts barbecuing while Lai and she cut the vegetables. Nunk hopes that Jang and Chu should be practicing but is disappointed to see them making shaved ice cream using magic. Ning was going to stop them from having fun and starting training, but suddenly Zia arrived there with Ning's favorite milk tea, and he changed his mood and started having fun with them. 
Zia suggested Ning stay low profile and not cause trouble, but he already thinks he is low profile. After some while, Ning explained to his students that their special regime is divided into self-training, followed by theory lessons at night, and during the self-training period, he'll be pointing out the flaws of each of them individually. Zai Tian brought a device for training that would unleash a fierce magic attack by just opening it, and it had a receiver that automatically flows magic into the person using it. Zai explained that if a person used this for training, their defense magic would be unparalleled. Ning scolded him that his device was useless, but Zai said it was the most advanced equipment available on the market. Ning asks Zai if his device can teach attacking and tells him to come over and teach Chu how to defend together. Ning decides to teach emergency landing to Chu, so he demonstrates to him by taking a flight and landing using defense magic to protect from any injury while doing an emergency landing. In order to help Chu learn defense magic as soon as possible, Ning instructs Zai to control the equipment attacks toward Chu, and they start practicing together. Zai guides Chu that the protective barrier is just an extension and application of internal strength, and he just needs to defend himself when the machine attacks. Zai turns the machine on, and Chu immediately creates a barrier, but it gets broken by the machine's attack. He is going to fall, but Ning makes him land safely using his magic. Ning guides Shi Feng to practice more for using his mental erosion properly to control people better. But meanwhile, Lai offers Shi a drumstick which Ning snatches from him and scolds him to focus on training. Ning is going to teach them steps on spiritual strength cultivation, but Lai takes out another drumstick. She snatches it from him, eats it, and tells Lai to listen to Ning. Lai gets mad at Shi, and they start fighting, but Ning immediately stops them and guides Shi to train for a while. After successfully training a few steps on mental erosion as guided by Ning, she forgets the next step and trips, but Ning holds him and tells him to rest for a bit. After that, Ning tells Lai that now it's his turn for training and that if he wants to pass the assessment, he should follow his instructions, and before that, he tells him to hand over all the food he currently has on him. Lai returns the last drumstick to Ning, and Ning instructs him to run 10 laps first to diligently train his body to make him pass the examination. Ning also restricts him from eating fried food until after the assessment and eats the last drumstick he took from Lai. But Lai keeps running while crying for his drumstick. Ning notices Cold start reading the summoning guide, so he goes to her to teach the call of life because she has been practicing the summoning technique for a while now. Cold Start wonders what Call of Life is, so Ning explains that it's an advanced level summoning technique in which the summoned beast will grow with the summoner. Ning explains that every person's summoned beast from Call of Life is unique and summons his beast to teach Cold Star this technique. Cold Start uses her hair to summon a dragon, but she ends up summoning a chick and gets mad at Ning. Ning remembers that the food of the summoned beast is a person's aura, so that's why the chick starts plucking her hair to eat them. She couldn't tolerate it, so she ran away yelling while trying to get rid of it. Meanwhile, Zai informs Ning that Chu has learned defense and asks him if it's time for him to teach him to attack. The next day on Haoshan, Ning announces to his students that he'll teach theory history to them. Ning notices that Lai will master his skill soon as he successfully snatches the drumstick from Ning's hand, and he also sees that Cold Star is wearing a hood to protect her hair from the chick she summoned. The chick plucks her hair, but she stops it and feeds it herself. However, Ning gets worried that the chick has quite the appetite. Cold Star yells at Ning because she wouldn't have learned the call of life if she knew she would lose all her hair. Yet, Ning tells her that as long as she passes the assessment, he'll help her eliminate this problem. Ning remembers that there used to be a hair-growing plant, but he can't recall its name and wonders if Sayo is an S-level teacher so she might have any information about that plant. Ning inquires about the plant, and she says there is a place where he can get the plant, but it's quite dangerous. Ning says it's okay, although he needs more reliance points. Ning offers Zia to accompany him to get the plant, and she agrees to help him, but on a condition that he later regrets. He accepts because he uses her as a model to teach students about the meridians in their bodies when they do practice. Finally, the test day arrives, and Ning reaches the test site with his students before time. However, Lai Jai taunts them that it doesn't matter if they come early for the test because they'll eventually be fired if they don't pass the test. Zhang Wen sarcastically tells the teachers to give Ning some space, but Ning trusts that all his students will pass the test. However, if not for reliance points, he would have taken care of Zhang Wen long ago. Yun Ruo calls the test candidates to enter the test site, and Ning instructs his students to complete their assessments and return to class quickly. Zhang Wen set the paper for Ning's class, making it difficult for them to answer the questions, and they feel afraid that they are doomed. 
Hyunryo stops them from whispering and tells them that anyone found cheating will be awarded zero marks. After some while, the test finishes, and Jang tells Ning that the theory test is over and now he'll see how Ning behaves arrogantly with them. Jang Wen collects the tests from Yunryo to see how miserably Class D failed and bets to eat a table if Ning's class pass. Jang gets shocked to see that all the students pass the test and says they have cheated because it's not possible. But Ning asks if he is questioning the supervision of Yun Ruo, which makes Jang furious, and he leaves, saying that he'll see them in the field test. Ning's students assure him that they have not cheated, and he gets satisfied that the result of Zio's theory tutoring is not bad. The first skill test is Chu Feng's speed test, and the track doesn't look suitable for Class D. However, Chu's class fellows are confident that he'll pass the test. Meanwhile, Teacher Liu arrives there to train for the upcoming competition at the Cherry Blossom Academy. But Jang informs him that the school let them take charge of Class D's assessment, and that they need to use the track for a while. Liu also wants to see what a former S-Class teacher can do with such a trash class and goes to the viewing platform with Jang Wen. Chu asks Ning if he knows Liu, but Ning says he doesn't and tells him to focus on the competition. Chu Feng has to compete against teacher Zheng Ming, and their assessment skill is speed. Zhang Wen announces that spherical objects in the track will explode when touched, and the explosion will spray paint in all directions. Each time the paint is splattered, the final passing time will be increased by 10 seconds. The race starts, and Zheng quickly rushes towards the finish line. But Chu also comes rushing behind him. Zheng stepped on the balls to gain speed and used the explosion to sabotage Chu, which added 30 seconds to Chu's passing time. Ning worries for Chu. But Chu continues competing with Zheng to win the race. As the competition progressed, Zheng continued to touch the spheres and spill paint onto Chu. However, Chu cleverly dodges Zheng's schemes while charging towards the finish line. Observing Zheng's tactics, Cold Star expressed concern. But Zhang Wen reassured them that as long as the paint did not splash onto Zhang, it was permissible for him to touch the spheres. During their race, Chu managed to overtake Zhang and took the opportunity to taunt him, stating that Zhang was inferior for using such tactics to secure a victory. This infuriated Zheng, prompting him to launch a magical attack on Chu. However, to Zheng's shock, Chu successfully shielded himself from the attack. Chu expressed gratitude for Ning who had taught him defensive magic skills. Ning then raised a critical question regarding Zhang's actions of raising his hand against Chu. However, Zhang Wen asserted that any action was permissible as long as the participants remained on the racing track. Even if the paint adhered to Chu's protective shield, it'll also be counted. Suddenly, Ning burst into the announcement room in a fit of fury, informing Chu that Zhang had claimed the competitors could do anything on the track. Ning instructed Chu to demonstrate his emergency landing against his opponent, as Jang allowed the participants to use any tactic on the track. Chu is glad to hear this because it's a chance for him to win the test by using emergency landing on Jang. Chu Feng wasted no time in obeying Ning's command, swiftly executing an emergency landing on Jang Ming during the speed test. His efficient skill secured him the victory, prompting enthusiastic cheers from his fellow students. However, Zhang raised an objection, informing Ning that Chu had touched the machines and even made physical contact with Zhang. In response, Ning reminded Zhang that he had explicitly declared that as long as the participants stayed on track, all actions were permissible. He went as far as threatening violence against Zhang if he failed to recall this fact. Meanwhile, Liu arrived at the scene and declared that Chu's actions were indeed within the rules. With Liu's intervention, Zhang's reluctantly accepted the decision of Chu's success. Zhang then announced the commencement of the subsequent assessment. At this point, Lai Zhu, feeling dizzy because of hunger, approached Ning and requested to be the first to undertake the upcoming challenge. Understanding Lai's fatigue, Ning agreed to his plea and expressed hope that the intensive training of the past few days would yield the desired results for him. In the upcoming physical competition, Lai Zhu found himself against his opponent, the Class C teacher Lei Fei. Before the match, Ning provided Lai with some strategic advice. Ning suggested Lai squad down for 10 seconds as soon as the match commenced and then rose swiftly to deliver a powerful punch. On the other side, Zhang Wen, a supporter of Lei Fei, reminded him of the importance of passing this test. Lei Fei discouraged Lai Zhu, believing he was in no condition to fight, but Lai Zhu told Lei Fei to quickly begin the assessment so that he could grab a meal afterward. When the match started, Lei Fei attempted to land a punch on Lai Zhu who promptly followed Ning's instructions, squatting down as his opponent swung his fist. After precisely 10 seconds, Lai rose to his feet and unleashed a deadly blow, defeating Lei Fei. Despite the defeat, Zhang Wen urged Lei Fei to continue the assessment, but he accepted his defeat. 
However, Lai gracefully accepted his victory, and after the match, Shi Feng, impressed by Lai Zhu's performance, offered him his favorite drumstick as a prize. Excitedly, Lai chased after Shi Feng, eager to savor a bite of the delicious reward. Lai Zhu handed Shi a drumstick and reassured him there was no need for aggression, as he intended to give it to him anyway. Meanwhile, an announcement rang out, signaling the beginning of Shi Feng's spiritual assessment. Lai Jijin, determined not to let Shi Feng emerge victorious, assured Zhang Wen of his commitment. The battle commenced with Lai Jijin unleashing his intimidating spiritual powers, which Zhang Wen knew were not ordinary and not far from actualization. Cold Star expressed concern, believing that Lai Jijin possessed the strength of an A-class teacher, making it challenging for Shi Feng to succeed. Unfortunately, Lai Jijin wasted no time casting a relentless attack on Shi Feng with his spiritual magic. Faced with this attack, Shi Feng runs to evade the attacks, desperately seeking a way to counter and distract his opponent. Lai Jijin cast replicas of himself in a cunning move, leaving Shi Feng attacked from all directions. In a final attempt to bring the battle to a swift end, Lai Jijin launched his decisive move. However, undeterred by his adversary's arrogance, Shi Feng mustered up his courage and rose to his feet. Fully aware that his defeat would lead to the disbandment of Class D, Lai chuckled arrogantly confident in his imminent victory. But in a stunning turn of events, Shi Feng harnessed his magic, drawing power from his opponent, and unleashed a devastating attack fueled by Lai's own spiritual energy. Meanwhile, Zhang Wen, filled with rage, shouted in protest at Shi Feng's audacious move. Simultaneously, Ning couldn't help but feel a sense of pride and admiration for his exceptional students. Shi Feng rewarded his teacher with 100 reliance points as a gesture of gratitude for Ning's remarkable guidance. Similarly, Lai Zhu, impressed by Ning's impressive teaching techniques, contributed an additional 80 points, showing his commitment to continuing in the school. Now filled with joy at Shi Feng's unexpected victory, Lai joined in the celebrations with his classmates. Amidst the celebration, Zhang Wen made an announcement regarding the upcoming assessment of summoning abilities. Zhang is confident that Wai Feng's appearance would diminish the significance of Class D's previous victories, casting a shadow of doubt over their hard-earned accomplishments. Zhang, aware of the mistakes made by his fellow teachers, cautions Wai against falling into similar pitfalls, and he promises to handle the D-Class opponent, Cold Star. Cold Star summoned a formidable army of rock warriors as the battle commenced. Wai acknowledged her strength that she used low-level summoning to such a powerful level but disparaged her teacher for teaching such a basic technique. Eager to showcase his superior summoning prowess, Wai summoned a terrifying monster that swiftly dispatched Cold Star's rock soldier. However, Cold Star retaliated by commanding her two rock soldiers to attack Wai's monster. Undeterred, Wai guided his monster to crush her soldiers, leaving him on the verge of victory. But Cold Star swiftly summoned her rock beast, which unleashed a devastating blow that left Wai's monster reeling. Wai struggled to comprehend the turn of events. Wai, dumbfounded by the strength displayed by his opponent, could hardly believe his defeat was imminent as Cold Star's creature moved in for the decisive blow leaving him in a state of shock and disbelief. Seizing the opportunity, Cold Star commanded her rock beast to eliminate Wai's monster and bring the battle to its conclusion. In the midst of a fierce battle, Cold Star's formidable rock beast delivered a powerful punch to its opponent. However, Wai, undeterred and confident in his abilities, remained convinced that victory was within his grasp. Determined to turn the tide, he commanded his own summoned monster to retaliate, sparking an intense clash between the two mighty creatures. Unexpectedly, Cold Star's rock beast proved to be overwhelmingly dominant, relentlessly destroying Wai's valiant monster. As she began to revel in her win, Wai unleashed his original summoning technique. With a swift and cunning move, he conjured a swarm of snakes that destroyed Cold Star's rock beast. Witnessing this astonishing turn of events, Cold Star was overwhelmed by terror, instinctively rescuing her vulnerable chick from being swept away in the chaotic aftermath. Meanwhile, amidst the chaos, Ning wonders why her summoned beast is not awakening. The snakes were about to attack Cold Star, but suddenly, her summoned chick intervened, and while trying to save her from the snakes, it fell victim to the vicious snakes. Fueled by anger and concern, Cold Star swiftly brandished a blade and skillfully evaded the snake's attack. She managed to pierce Wai's leg. To Cold Star's astonishment, the snakes mysteriously healed Wai's wound, their power beyond her comprehension, and they grabbed Cold Star by her hair and started pulling it. Wai hiding inside the shield of snakes told Cold Star that she had quite a temper, but she was doomed to fail. Yet, with a swift decision, Cold Star severed her hair, using it as a shield to defend herself. 
Astonishingly, her severed locks fell upon her injured chick, triggering an unexpected awakening that left everyone astonished. However, to the disappointment of Ning and Cold Star, the chick's transformation only leads to it becoming a parrot. Despite this, the parrot skillfully managed to dodge the attack of snakes and, with a fierce strike, shattered their protective shield, launching an assault on Y. After striking Y's face, the parrot started pecking Y's hair, and he helplessly yelled at it to stop. Y got defeated by the parrot, and Cold Star appreciated it for his fantastic work. On the other hand, Zhang Wen is angry and yells because his colleagues can't take care of a few trashy students, so he tells Yun Ruo to evaluate the following test. Meanwhile, Dong Lei arrives there and requests Zhang Wen to let him evaluate the next round because the magic Ning showed him last time on the training ground was on a whole different level. Upon asking Zhang Wen, Dong explains that he'll spare no effort during the assessment, but the assessment will inevitably lead to accidents, and he'll take responsibility for it. Jang, after hearing Dong's plan, agrees to send him for the following assessment and announces that the following assessment is between Class C teacher Dong Lei against Class D student Gu Zhu. Ning uplifts Gu's morale by telling that her magic casting speed is breakneck, so she can use different kinds of attack magic and still have room for surprises. Dong challenges Gu that last time she was lucky at the training ground but this time she won't be so lucky and attacks her with Storm Swirl, who immediately counterattacks with Icy Rain and Lighting Fury and breaks through Dong Lei's Storm Swirl. Dong Lei knows her speed is incredible, so he immediately casts a new attack, Electric Chase, ensuring she cannot dodge it. Gu tries her best to dodge the attack using the Ice Barrier, but is shocked to see that Dong Lei has disappeared from the scene and wonders where he is. Meanwhile, Dong Lei, using a cheap tactic, attacked her from behind with a sharp object, injuring her eye, and she fell. Her class fellow Zhang yelled that it was against the rules to use a sharp weapon during the assessment. But Zhang Wen ignored his concern declaring it a minor accident during the assessment and told him not to make a fuss. Ning is sure that Zhang Wei instigated it, so he grabs him by his collar and questions him about what he told Dong before the assessment and tells him to stop the assessment quickly. Suddenly Lei stopped Ning from creating trouble saying that accidents happen and it seemed like his students still wanted to continue the assessment. Ning gets worried that Gu still wants to continue the assessment However, Dong also tells her to accept her defeat, but when she refuses to give up, he has no choice but to finish the assessment by defeating her with his final attack. As Dong Lei conjured a rock weapon, he aimed to strike Gu, but she swiftly erected an ice shield, deflecting his attack. Determined to gain the upper hand, Gu retaliated with a barrage of ice spikes, hoping to catch Dong off guard. Yet, he countered skillfully, using his fire magic to melt the ice spikes. Undeterred, Gu unleashed her lightning fury again, but Dong swiftly fashioned a hand of solid rock to diminish her lightning attack. He declares that her strong point is only quick casting and attacks her with an electric blaze which destroys her defense shield and hits her. Gu raises her hand to accept her defeat, and her mind is flooded with painful memories of her father's scolding because she failed her assessments. So he arranged her marriage. But at that moment, a familiar voice echoed in her ears, Ning's voice, urging her to fight on, so she gets back on her feet. Puzzled Dong, he questioned her decision to stand after admitting defeat. Gu declared that she would not accept defeat, her determination shining through her words. Dong Lei restrained Gu's magic, leaving no choice for her to secure victory. Despite the odds stacked against her, she maintained her unwavering confidence, knowing that she still had a chance as long as she remained standing in the field. Dong Lei furiously prepared to attack her again, but she conjured an ice wall between them which he effortlessly shattered and lunged towards her, delivering a powerful blow that sent her crashing into the wall behind her. Gu swiftly forms an ice block capturing Dong within its frozen confines, but he bursts it with fire, enveloping the arena in a cloud of steam. Zhang can't see what's happening there, and seizing the moment, Gu creates a thunderstorm launching a powerful attack on Dong. Still, Ning gets worried because she is using water vapors to conduct electricity, which will also injure her. After the intense battle, Gu and Dong Lei fell, and their energies drained from the continuous fighting. Witnessing Gu's collapse, Zhang Wen declared that she had failed the assessment. Zhang objects that Gu has passed the assessment, but Zhang Wen clears that she can't get up, which means she failed the test. Ning tells Zhang to take Gu to Lin Kaio, and as he leaves, Ning summons his monster to beat Zhang Wen. But Lei stops him saying that he wasn't this violent in the past. It's been a long time since the incident with Ning's family, but Lei feels that Ning is still stuck in his past. 
However, Ning tells him not to pretend they are close because he'll always be in front of him waving gestures. Lei tries to calm Ning by showing that Gu has stood up and passed the assessment, ensuring that Jiang doesn't make any objections. However, Jiang Wen gets infuriated thinking Yun Ruo lied to him that Ning has not recovered and announces the following defense assessment between Class B teacher Feng Kang against Class D student Sai Tian. Meanwhile, Jiang Wen announces that withstanding the attacks for an hour or knocking out the teacher will be counted as a pass. Moreover, Jiang Wen is happy because he knows that Feng has a rare enchantment ability that gives him the physical ability to enhance his power by 50 times. Meanwhile, Feng starts the assessment by attacking Zai Tian. Zai created a strong shield that protected him against Feng's punch. But Feng knows as long as he remained enchanted, his strength would keep on increasing over time. Zai mocks Feng by saying if he needs someone to blow on his sore hand after it collides with his shield, which makes Feng furious, he tries to attack him again. But Zai stops him, takes out his reading book, and tells him to continue. Feng warns Zai from speaking too early because he knows his strength will increase by 50 times in half an hour. But Zai thinks his strength is nothing compared to what Ning used against him during practice. During the training, Ning taught Zai to expand his shield. However, Zai thought expanding the shield would make it thin, and his defense would fall sharply. But Ning told him to follow his teachings if he wanted to learn attacks. Zai showed Ning the limit, he could expand his shield. But Ning told him to try harder because it was quickly breakable and told him to retract it, and then he would teach him attacks. Back to the present, Zhang took Gu to Lin Kaio, and she took her to the treatment room. She asks Gu who injured her so badly and says he'll inform the leader to destroy the school tomorrow, but Gu tells her that it's because of her stubbornness. Lin Kaio feels that Gu is not suited for undercover work, so she tells someone to escort her back to the league, but Gu refuses to go back. Meanwhile, Cold Star and Jang wait outside while Lin treats Gu in the treatment room. Cold Star reminds Jang to prepare for the next round of assessments, assuring him that he'll work hard for the following assessment. Suddenly Lin takes out Gu after doing her bandages and tells Jang that her situation is not good because of internal injuries and she might lose her fight. Jang gets furious that he'll make Jang Wen and Dong Lei pay for this, which makes Lin wonder if he and Gu are dating. On the other hand, it's been half an hour since the assessment started, and Zai tells Feng to accept his defeat. But suddenly Feng's strength increases which Zai feels that it's useless. Feng's punch causes cracks in Zai's shield. But Sai knows that Feng's reaction is slow, so before his next attack, he shrinks his shield and immediately expands it, making Feng push outside the room, stomping him into a wall. Sai passed the assessment, bragged that they should have bought an S-class teacher against him, and gave the credit for his win to Ning, which increased his reliance points by 100. Ning tells Zai that his performance wasn't half bad, and Sai showing off, offers Chu to visit his home to try out the new machine he bought. But Ning slaps him and tells him to show off when he fully masters the protective cover. Lei thinks that the students of Class D are good kids. But meanwhile, Feng arrives complaining that Zai broke the rules because the test was to access the defense of the students, yet he used his protective cover to attack him. Jiang Wen tells him to shut up and be embarrassed by losing to a student and tells Ning that their previous passing tests were sheer luck and they'll not pass the following assessment. However, Ning replies that after all their consecutive losses, Jiang Wen's ego is hurt, and he starts to spout nonsense, but Jiang tells him that he'll personally fight against student Jiang in the next exam. After hearing Jiang Wen is fighting in the next test, Lei decides to take his place and judge the next round for the time being. Lei announces that Jiang should reach the assessment ground in a minute, otherwise, he'll be disqualified. Zhang Wen also taunts Ning that his student has yet to arrive and Ning wonders why Zhang has not returned after sending Gu to the infirmary, and tells Chu to look at why Zhang has not returned. But suddenly Zhang enters there, breaking the door. After some while, Cold Star arrives at the assessment ground with Gu thinking that the test must have started, but they enter the ground when Zhang gets attacked by Zhang Wen. They both get worried that Zhang is losing, however, Zhang tries to resist back. But Jiang Wen tells him that his resistance in the face of death is futile and smashes Jiang's face with a strong punch. Jiang is determined to settle the score for Gu, and Ning understands that his anger is clouding his judgment and fears that if this goes on, Jiang won't be able to pass the assessment. Meanwhile, Cold Star also goes to Ning to remind him to do something, otherwise, Jiang will not be able to win against Jiang Wen. 
Play comments that Jang is getting out of hand and has forgotten what he learned in Class S after hearing this. Ning immediately remembers that Jang is a former S class student and tells him to calm down and control his spirit and Kai. In the past, Lai taught Ning during their training session that the grimmer the situation, the calmer the fighter must be because concealing the spirit in Kai enables a person to use every ounce of their strength to break out of their lowest point and bring out full strength. Back to the present, Jang hears Ning guiding him to conceal his spirit in Kai and dodges Jang Wen's attack remembering he actually forgot such an important thing. Jang Wen attacks Jang in the back of his neck, but it causes no effect on him, and Lei understands that he has calmed his Kai, so he stops Ning from further assistance because excessive assistance might disqualify him. Jiang Wen assesses that Jiang Tian has become more robust, but he thinks he still can't win against him and punches Jiang, which he tries to stop but got pushed back with it. Meanwhile, Gu gets up from his wheelchair and tells Jiang Tian to bring it on and win the battle. Jiang Wen prepared to unleash his final move, intending to end the battle. But as soon as Jiang Tian heard Gu's voice, a sudden realization struck him, causing him to dodge the impending attack swiftly. In that moment, Jiang understood the importance of remaining calm and not succumbing to anger. With newfound composure, Jiang Wen resumed his relentless assault, curious to observe Jiang Tian's dodging skills. Once again, Jiang Wen managed to land a powerful punch on his opponent. During their exchange of blows, Jiang Tian retaliated, successfully striking Jiang Wen. Recognizing this as an opportunity to secure a victory, Jiang Wen swiftly regained his footing and resolved to utilize his trump card. Yet, Jiang Tian skillfully evaded the fierce assault, bowing to make Jiang Wen suffer the consequences of his actions. Jiang Tian dodges all the punches coming his way and attacks Wen from his back, and at last, he stomps him into the ceiling with his attack. While Wen is going to fall, Jiang again kicks his face and, with a strong hit, smashes him against the wall making him blow outside the building and destroying all the walls in his way. Lei announces that the assessment is over, and Jiang Tian passes the assessment and thinks that the former S-Class genius has reclaimed his throne. Lei announced that the performance of Class D was outstanding. He'll personally submit the application for the promotion to Class D. The students get excited that they will be promoted to Class C. Now they'll not have to worry about being expelled anymore. According to Cold Star, they defeated a teacher of Class B, so they could also be promoted to Class A. Ning appreciates his students' performance and announces throwing a barbecue after school, and asks the students to raise their hands if they want to go, and everyone raises their hands. Ning takes the students for a barbecue, celebrates their victory, and tells them to feast to their heart's content because they worked hard for their win. Meanwhile, Lin Kaio arrives there and scolds Ning for letting his injured students eat meat. But Cold Star tells her that it's alright to let go once in a while, and offers her to join their celebration. Gu assures Lin that sitting with her friends makes her feel safe, so Lin accepts their request. Suddenly Chu notices that the meat has disappeared from the grill, and when Zai understands Lai has eaten his meat, he starts fighting with him. Meanwhile, Zio Fan asks Ning when he plans to pick the hair growing flower, and he replies to go and get it the following day. Ning also thanks Zio for helping his students pass the theoretical test, and she says it's alright. Simultaneously Lin Kaio goes on a side to call on the phone and talk with someone that they should get revenge because Gu got severely injured. On the second day, Ning, along with Xi and Lai, standing outside Class D, gets shocked to see the door is sealed, and there is a notice saying that management cut off the revenue and suspended Class D's teaching facilities and equipment. Ning understands that Li orchestrates it, so he opens the door by kicking it and wonders how they could use such an underhanded method to deal with them. Shi Feng thinks of a plan and instructs Lai Zhu to work on his plan. And when Ning asks them what they are cooking, they tell him that they'll take care of the finance department and make sure they bring back their furniture. In a fit of anger, Lai Zhu forcefully opens the door to the office of the finance head, Liu, causing a loud bang. Startled and frightened, Liu questioned Lai's intentions and inquired about his class affiliation. In response, Lai began complaining about his arm pain, and Liu tells him that this is not the infirmary and he should go there. But Lai starts crying accusing Liu of hitting him. Meanwhile, Shi Feng takes pictures of the scene and says he was passing by when he noticed a teacher bullying a student. Exploiting the situation, they blackmailed Liu, demanding the return of their class equipment and threatening to leak the incriminating photo. But Liu foiled their plan by revealing the presence of a surveillance camera in his office. On the other hand, in the meeting room, Lei gathered teachers to tell them that Class D passed the assessment by defeating the teachers of Class B, and proposed their promotion. The Class S spiritual teacher Yang Hua thinks it's impossible and teachers must have gone easy on them. 
Still, the class s summoning teacher Wen Ruin says she is okay with their promotion, and Zia also vouched that they can be promoted. Lei announces that the matter is concluded as three teachers agreed with the promotion of Class D, and after he leaves with Wen and Sio. Wu Yang asks Zai Luo why he didn't give his opinion because he also hates Ning Fan. Zai clarified that he was agreeable to promoting students, acknowledging that Ning had not yet fully recovered and could not teach Class S students. Wu Yang understood Zai's intention to poach Ning's students and force Ning to leave. However, a student from Class S hears that Zhang can be promoted back to his class, so he resolved to devise a plan in response. Liu, because of the surveillance camera, warned Shi and Lai Fang from troubling him, but suddenly Ning arrives there and makes him bow using the bow to the master on him. Ning made the situation look like that Liu realized his mistake, so he asked for forgiveness and accepted his apology. Ning suggests Liu discuss the matter of Class D, and after using the eye of the teacher on Liu, Ning learned that Liu got injured in the past, so he can't use the Call of Life summoning skill. Ning proposes a deal to help Liu summon his beast, but he doesn't believe Ning, so Ning decides to leave, saying that he originally was going to help Liu cure his baldness. Liu immediately accepts Ning's deal and asks him for help, so Ning calls out his summoned beast first. Meanwhile, Cold Star is getting bored in Class D while her friends are playing with her parrot. Amid that, summoner Zhang Kaila and fighter Wang Fei from Class S arrive there and make a joke about Zhang Tian's broken arm, which offends him, but Sai decides to handle this situation. So he tells those students to scram to their class unless they are looking for a beating. Ning guides Liu to follow his instructions if he wants to call his summoned beast, and for that, he orders some food for Liu, including raw fish, to help him with his summoning skill. Liu asks Ning if they can use another method because of the smell of the food. Ning tells him to follow his instructions and guides him to try to summon his beast while eating. Liu, desperate to summon his beast, cuts his hand. Liu starts to eat the stinky food, and meanwhile, he succeeds in summoning his beast, which is a cat. Liu gets emotional to see his summoned cat, but the cat scratches Liu's face. Ning explains that felines are extremely sensitive to smell, so they feed on the aroma when Liu summons it. But this is counted as forced awakening, and Liu's summoned weak is still very weak, so he should be careful. Ning gains 500 reliance points from Liu, which increases his points to 1255 from which he can unlock a new skill with 1,000 points. He also needs to improve his awakening. Liu bows to Ning and says he'll follow him, so Ning decides to increase his reliance points instead of rushing to unlock his new skill. Ning tells Lai to carry the equipment to their class, and meanwhile, he gets a call from Zio saying that she reached the school and is waiting for him because they agreed to gather medical herbs. Ning almost forgot about this, so he rushed towards the gate. On the other hand, Zhang Kai warns Zai that they are there for Zhang Tian, so the others should scram. Otherwise, they'll have to bear the consequences, but Zai challenges him to show what he can do. Zhang Kai punches Zai, which he avoids by creating his protective barrier. But when Zhang Kai runs to hit him again, Zai uses the expand shield technique to throw him away. But Zhang Kai dodges it and destroys Zai's shield with a fierce punch. Wang Fei thinks the building needs repair because Zhang Kai dragged Zai outside the school by destroying the wall. Chu tries to save Zai by attacking Zhang Kai with emergency landing. But Zhang swiftly dodges his attack and throws Zai towards Chu, making them both stamp to the wall. Zhang Tian yells at Zhang Kai to stop, but Zhang Kai says he'll do so if he agrees to finish their last competition with him. Cold Star stops Zhang Tian from fighting because he is still injured, so she decides to fight instead of him. But she worryingly wonders where Ning Fan disappears in situations like these. At the same time, Ning Fan is busy saving Zio from the attack of poisonous bees during searching for medical herbs. Zio freezes some bees, and Ning asks if she is referring to these poisonous bees. When she warns him about the danger of getting hair growing plants, she denies it because that place shouldn't have any toxic bees and their actions aren't normal. Ning understands what she means is that someone is controlling those bees from behind the scenes. When the bees surrounded them, Ning told that person to come out, and suddenly, a man appeared there saying that he was looking for the long-haired monster, but he didn't expect to have extra gains. He is an ability user from Alliance and thinks they are ability users from Orthodox. But suddenly, Ning and Zio attack his bees simultaneously with Blast Shield and Freeze. Ning casts the Burning Sky skill, and the man gets terrified that Ning can use different abilities simultaneously, and Ning immediately takes him down. Suddenly they hear a sound that Zio explains is the cry of the long-haired monster, and as that man said he was there for the monster, she thinks he can't be the only one, and their goal could be spirit medicine. Ning rushes there and tells Zio to hurry up and come with him. 
On the other hand, while heading towards the class, Shi Feng decides to wait while Lai brings the class equipment. But he gets startled to see the destruction there and wonders what a Class S student Wang Fei is doing there. Cold Star, in a fit of fury, summons her rock soldier because Zhang Kai injured her friends. But her rock soldier immediately got destroyed by the advanced rock soldier of Wang Fei. Cold Star commands her parrot to attack his soldier, but it only manages to hurt the rock soldier's arm slightly, and Wang mocks her summoning beast. Cold Star orders her parrot to peck him, but he summons his beast tiger, which her parrot gets terrified to see and hides in her hood. Meanwhile, Shi Feng wonders if they don't know what would happen if they offend Class S and thinks he'll be done if he makes a move, so he thinks to leave from there. Wang Fei says that he like that Cold Star is uncomfortable seeing him but also can't dare to attack him. But suddenly she controls his mind and tells Cold Star to help others while he takes care of Wang. And meanwhile, Zai tells Chu to fly away but he can't leave others. Zhang Kai is going to punch Chu, but suddenly, a rock army appears in front of him, and he runs to save himself. While following the cry of the long-haired monster, Ning and Zio reach the cave, and Zio tells him to quickly collect the rare herb and not let the people with different abilities rob it. Ning tells her to stop because he saw the monster running outside, and it fell in front of them. Suddenly, someone from inside the cave throws a whip to attack the beast, but Ning grabs it, and a man comes out asking who dared to stop his whip. Ning warns him that killing wild animals is illegal, but the man asks where Aji is because he was guarding the forest and wonders how he let them in. But Ning tells him that he beat him a bit strongly. He tries to attack Ning to destroy Aji, but Ning uses his bow to master skill on him, and when he tries to use the whip on Ning, he calls his summoning beast, which instantly defeats that man. After that, Ning gets puzzled to see that the monster calls all its fellow monsters outside the cave to gather Ning, and he can't understand what is happening. The monster thanked Ning and Zio for their help and let them go with huge bunches of herbs. Zio feels that the monsters seem grateful and are not as ferocious as they are in the book, and Ning agrees that the book might be written wrong. Upon inquiring, Zio tells Ning that only two herb branches are enough for growing hair, but they'll use the rest to nourish kids. While they are about to head home, a man suddenly comes after them to stop them from leaving. But Ning tells him to take care of himself because there is a giant monster behind him. The giant monster furiously grabs that man, and Ning and Zio realize the book seems right about the monster. The next day, when Lai enters the class, he gets shocked to see his class fellows injured, and she tells him about yesterday's fight. Jang considers himself responsible and decides to get stronger to reclaim justice, but Cold Star says the trouble they face is enough. Meanwhile, Jang Kai and Wang Fei arrive to settle the score, but amidst that, Sun Zai from Class S Spirit Department arrives there looking for a spirited boy from Class D, and after looking at Shi Feng, he asks if he is the one he is looking for. Ning meets Liu Guang at the school door and Liu informs him that there is a meeting about the test and promotion of the class, and he tells him to come with him for that. Meanwhile, Ning hears some students discussing how Class D students defeated the teachers of Class B. But when they say that Class D got beaten by Class S students yesterday, Ning gets furious. Liu assures Ning to talk about this matter after the meeting because the principal is back, and he'll attend this meeting. During the meeting, Director Ma read the report about intentionally inflicting injury on Gu Zui. And according to the regulations, the chief examiner, Zhang Wen, should be expelled. When the principal inquires about Zhang Wen, he puts all the blame on Teacher Dong and provides pictures of him intentionally injuring Gu with a sharp object during the fight. However, Lei reminds Zhang that he can't run from his responsibility. At that time, he also covers up for Dong. The principal, Dao Goyu, expels Dong for his mistake and degrades Zhang from his post of homeroom teacher to a logistic in charge and warns him to submit his resignation if he has any problems with this decision. On the other hand, Sun beats Shi Feng, and Wang tells Zhang to bow in front of him, but Cold Star retaliates. And meanwhile, Ning arrives there to see who tried to bully his students. At the same time, the meeting ends, and Dao gets furious because Ning missed the meeting. Wang mocks Zhang for not fighting him because he broke his arm the last time they fought and calls them a bunch of rubbish students waiting for their teacher to get revenge for them. Cold Star gets offended, but Ning calms her and warns Wang that his students can easily remove him from the class ranking. But Wang mocks him for thinking that his students can remove him from the orders. However, Ning dares him to pick one of his students if he doesn't believe him, so he picks Zai. Zai show offs that he got picked because he is the strongest, but Ning gives him a reality check and slaps him that he is the weakest. Ning teaches him a new technique to follow in the upcoming fight, and after that, they go to the outdoor training ground. 
The contest starts, and Zai forms his protective cover while Wang summons a three-headed monster that attacks Zai. Zai immediately creates spikes on his shield, which destroys the monster when it tries to attack. Ding is happy that Sai learns fast, and Sai mocks Wang that his advanced summoning is ridiculous. Wang immediately summons another monster to attack Sai, and when Sai tries to attack, it dodges it, and Sai gets worried. Sai again tries to attack by forming spikes with his shield, but the monster escapes it and tries to destroy his shield with his giant paw. But Zai immediately manages to shrink it. Zai remembers Ning taught him how to switch from defense to attack by using his imagination, so he creates a monster which eats Wang's monster. Wang gets terrified and runs away, saying that no matter if they defeat him still, they'll not be able to compete in the rankings competition. Ning scolds his class for getting bullied by Class S as he just left for one day, but she tells him that Class S is powerful. Ning says it doesn't matter because he'll teach his students new things this time, and they'll have a good training session. Ning gives Cold Star his hair growth herb as a reward for her previous victory, and tells her to drink it a little, but she drinks its whole bottle. The potion grows her hair too much, and she yells at Ning for not telling him sooner to drink less, but Ning suggests cutting them down and saving them for feeding her bird. Ning didn't attend the meeting, so the principal himself came to the training ground and said Ning was bold enough that he needed him to ask him to participate in the meeting. Ning is shocked to see the principal there, and Cold Star also feels shocked that this time Ning provoked the principal. Ning tries to blame Liu for not informing him of the meeting, but he immediately appears there, saying that he told him and the principal is there to give his class a chance to promote. Principal scolds Ning for not being organized, but Ning assures that he'll be more attentive in the future and requests the principal to let his class participate in S-Class rankings. Director Ma says that only students from classes A and S can participate in S-Class rankings, and if Ning wants to be eligible for that, he needs to let class A teachers acknowledge class D's abilities. Ning agrees and declares there have to be two competitions, and for the first one, class A needs to send out their strongest to fight, and as long as they do this, they should be able to acknowledge class D's strength and then for the second round, if first is not possible, he'll let class A acknowledge class D students one by one. Ma understands Ning wants to return to class S, but he says it's a foolish dream as Ning offends the principal. The principal agrees to give Ning a chance, and by breaking the rules, he allows Class D to participate directly in the Class S ranking competition. While leaving, the principal advises Ning that it's not too late to walk out and start a new life and tells him to let go of some things, from which Ning gets a flashback of the accident that occurred to his family. Cold tries to give herself a haircut, and after that, when she goes to school, she and Lai get shocked to see that her hair is short and they understand that she made a mistake while cutting her hair. Meanwhile, Ning announces that he has arranged some training related to the competition, but the students are not paying attention, so he shouts at them to be attentive, and amidst, he notices someone outside his class. Ning manages to capture the person, and Ning slaps him after seeing it's Dong Lei. Dong Lei says he came to apologize because he realized his mistake but Ning reminds him that he needs to apologize to the student he hurt. On the other hand, Wu Yang informs Zai Luo that the principal allowed Class D to participate in Class S rankings, and Zai decides to execute his plan of stealing Ning's students. Simultaneously, Lin Kaio gives Director Ma a list containing problems of the qualities of Class D to investigate during the ranking competition. The equipment Liu had ordered as a token of gratitude for Ning's assistance in regrowing his hair arrived at the weapon training site. Meanwhile, Ning comes there and scolds Liu because the equipment needs to be set up. So Ning tells the students to train independently, and informs them that he will personally teach them the following day. Later, Gu, upon asking, informs Zhang that she'll be alright in a few days, according to Lin Kaio, so Zhang also decides to rest for that day. But suddenly Liu shows him the new training machine. Liu explains that the device can detect the opponent's status, use the most appropriate fist fighting method, and start the machine. The machine is fixed on the most advanced level, and Zhang easily breaks the obstacle created by the device. Amid the training session, Hong Yellen, the top-ranked member of Class S, abruptly arrived and launched an unexpected attack on Zhang. Skillfully, Zhang managed to handle her assault. Zhang expressed his hesitation to train with her, fearing he would be outmatched, but she says she'll not use any weapon or strength and ask him to train with her. At the same time, Ning enjoyed a coffee outing with Xiao Fan. Unaware that Cold Star and their classmates discreetly observe them, Ning tells Zio that the students are competitive, and he is sure they'll ace the competition. So Zio gets excited and says she'll wait for him in Class S in the meantime, 
the other students approach Cold Star, requesting to use the telescope while she keeps an eye on Ning. Annoyed by their loud clamoring, Cold Star tells them to cease their noise. As Zio departs, Cold Star devises a mischievous plan to prank Ning. The following day, in the weapon training room, Cold Star engages in combat against the GDOO robot, deftly controlled by Liu. To Cold Star's amazement, Liu transforms the robot into a human-like form, and she requests Ning to teach her summoning spells that summon handsome beings. However, Ning dismisses her request, stating that his rock soldier is already handsome. Cold Star blackmails him that she'll spill the beans that Ning was left alone yesterday when Zio departed during their outing. Ning readily agrees to teach her any summoning technique she desires, so she shows interest in learning something dragon-related. However, Ning explains that dragons are merely comic creatures and cannot be summoned in reality. Suddenly Lai rushes into the scene, prompting Ning to wonder about the reason behind his hurried arrival. Meanwhile, a giant monster Gan King with a fish head arrives after Lai. But Sai comes forward to protect Lai and inquires about the creature's name. The fish shows its name boldly inscribed on its back, causing everyone to think Gan is a weird name. But Chu tries to check if it's a person wearing a fish head mask, but gets startled to see it's an amalgamation of fish head atop a human body. Meanwhile, Nangong Yan from the Class S summoning system arrives and says Gan is a powerful summoning beast. A while ago, Lai was eating dried fish in the break room when Gan also went there, and Lai offered him some dried fish. Assuming the gesture was a sacrificial tribute, Gan accepted Lai's offering and shared it with its summoner Nan Gong there. Upon inquiring, Lai told Nan that the snack he offered them was dry fish, causing both Nan and Gan to drop it from their hands. Deeply offended by Lai's careless act of feeding Gan one of its own kind, Nan Gong urges Gan to attack him. But Gan decides to forgive him because he did it unintentionally. Gan tells Nan that fighting is wrong because it hurts people, but Nan emotionally requests that he can't let this go, so Gan accepts his request to teach them a lesson. When Ryuan taught the class S students about the summoning beast Gan and explained that its front and back sides have eyes, she explains that the length of its eyes is wide, so tricks can't be used easily on it. And the fish head wobbles back and forth instead of turning around and it's best to attack it from the sides if someone wants to fight it. As Nan Gong Yan spread the word, Gan decided to take revenge, and following Nan's order, Gan attacked Zai with his deep water bomb, which went useless because Zai saved himself with the protective shield. Zai using his new offense magic technique, changes the whole barrier into fish sticks, but Ning thinks this way, it would be easier for Gan to attack Zai. Similarly, when Zai shoots Gan with the fish sticks, it immediately dodges the sticks but hits Zai with a big fish making him fly in the air, but Chu instantly saves Zai from falling. Gan attacks Chu with deep water pressure bomb but swiftly dodges it and smashes Gan's face with the new offense technique he learned. Ning gets impressed to think Chu learned defense magic. Chu made Gan's fish head turn red by hitting it with all his strength, and Gan accepted its defeat because it felt like its head would burst because of the heat. To everyone's shock, Na minimized into a small fish, and Nan, while holding it, yells that they are hateful because they gave Gan dried fish and tried to turn Gan into grilled fish. Ning tells Nan to keep quiet and makes him bow using bow to the master, and Nan can't understand why he is bowing and thinks there is a ghost. While crying and yelling that he'll make them pay him back one day, Nan was going to run away, but he bumped into Zhang at the door. Meanwhile, Chu thinks that Gan is hiding its actual strength, and he also tells Ning about his thoughts. Nan got back with Zhang Tian to get revenge on Ning's students, but they all got confused. On the other hand, Cold Star converts her parrot into a being like Gan but with the head of a parrot and a body like a human. Zhang came to get training from Ning. But Ning wondered what had happened to his face, to which Zhang said that yesterday he was a bit careless while practicing. Nan feels destroyed after knowing that Zhang is Ning's student. During break time, Lai was having lunch when Cold Star jokingly scolded him for being lazy again, and he got scared. But then she told him to relax because she and Gu also came there for rest. Cold Star inquires about Gu and what she has been practicing lately but gets shocked when Gu removes her bandage and shows her eye to her. When Gu asks Cold Start about her latest practice sessions, she reveals that she is still practicing her low-level summoning because, according to Ning, as long as her summoning platform is improved, the summoning of fate will be enhanced. Lai mocks Cold Star for still practicing basics, so she offendedly tells him to show what he is practicing. Lai tries to show off the thick skin technique he learned, but unimpressed Cold Star yells at him because it's ridiculous. Suddenly Gu inquires Cold Star about Jiang and she says Ning took him for special training. Simultaneously, Ning took Jiang Tian to Class S teacher Liu, 
and requested him to train Jack. Liu also wanted to meet Ning to ask if he remembered the rules of the S-ranking competition, and Ning said that he remembered the rule of the messy fight to accumulate points. Liu informs that the regulations of the upcoming competition will be slightly different from the previous one and the schools will send several teachers to eliminate students from the competition. He also cleared that if a student wins the teacher, the score will double, and the losing teacher will be downgraded. Ding hopes Liu to be merciful with his students, but he says that he is not participating because otherwise, the competition will end quickly. But he suggests to Ning that he must join the competition. A few days later, at the competition's opening ceremony, a girl is going to fall into the crowd, but suddenly, Huang Taiji protects her from falling. She thanks him and recognizes that he is one of the six elders, but a guy there informs her that Ning's family had an accident. And after that, there are only five elders left because Ning got transferred to Class D, and there is no backer. Ning was also present during their conversation, and he heard them talking. Meanwhile, the school board chairman Huang Taiji announces that each participant has a score of two points and whoever eliminates the other will get the score of the defeated person and the last 20 ones to survive will be the S-Class students. Wong also announces that five teachers will also participate, and if a student eliminates the teacher, their score will be double, and if the teacher defeats a student, it'll be counted as an elimination. While leaving, Wong meets Ning, tells him he looks more adaptable now, and tells him to win the competition to get transferred to S-Class, and Ning replies he'll try his best. Liu Yang taunts Ning that he can only dream about returning to Class S, making Ning use bow to the master on him. The competition was about to start, and Zhang Wen arrived on a plane, announcing that he'll play the entire live broadcast and reporting that the students were being divided into groups. They'll enter the transport plane to go to the competition venue. Zhang Wen during the broadcast announces that the planes took the participants to another island. The first plane arrived, and the players will enter the arena soon. Liu Yang tells the students that the time is unlimited and the game will be over until 20 students are left. He guides that the rescuers have been prepared on the island, so if anyone gets eliminated or wants to admit defeat, they should send a distress signal. After saying that, he jumps off the lane, and the students also jump behind him. But Ning gets worried because he didn't think of this situation, and now Lai is unwilling to jump because he is scared of heights. Zhang Wen makes fun of Ning's student, so Ning kicks Lai to help him and reminds him to timely open the parachute. Meanwhile, the second plane arrives, and Zhang Wen reports that these are the bright students to compete for the championship. The three former S-Class players teamed up, and he thinks they'll get a good ranking this time. Zhang Wen also notices the last champion Hong Ai Lin in the second plane, and she jumps without her umbrella, which makes him wonder if she is dreaming. Hong Ai Lin while landing bursts the parachutes of the three S-Class students. At the same time, Lai Zhu's parachute got stuck in a tree, and now he is hanging there. Wang Fei was confident that he'd win the competition because he formed the strongest group. But his dream went in vain when Hong Ai Lin destroyed their parachutes. Still, he summoned a flying bird to save himself from falling. And although Hong Ai Lin eliminated many candidates in the beginning, she'll be eliminated if she can't land safely. The drone camera captured Hong Ai destroying a colossal rock and using its stones to slow down to land safely. While people were wondering about her next move, she immediately laid down because she felt tired. On the other hand, Zhang broadcasts that three students are chasing Ning, and one of them stops Ning by breaking a mountain and making its rocks fall in his way. Meanwhile, two other students surround Ning and warn him to hand over his scores to them. However, Ning doesn't want to waste his reliance points. But still, he uses fire magic to surround all three students. They are about to accept their defeat when Ning spreads his fire, but suddenly Nan appears there, saving them using a water shield with the help of Gan. Dan warns Ning that he is out of luck today and offers the other three students to join hands with him in dealing with Ning Fan if they don't want to get eliminated. The students agreed because it allowed them to double their scores, but Gan thought it would be wrong if they bullied Ning. Nan reminds Gan how they got bullied by Ning, declares to get revenge, and commands his fellow students to attack Ning. However, Ning uses bow to the master on all of them to make them bow, and they get shocked to see his ability. Nan gets furious to see them bow to Ning and orders them to stand up, and they do so. Ning sees they are not giving up, so he uses the powerful bow to the famous teacher and gets them on their knees again. They started screaming because their knees hurt, and they got eliminated from the competition, but Nan managed to escape. Meanwhile, Chu and Zai took down some students and Chu wonders how his classmates are doing. Suddenly a girl sitting on a tree, while watching them, composed something on paper and dropped those papers behind Chu and Zai and Chu realized they got trapped in an enchantment. 
Chu and Zai get mesmerized to see the beauty of the enchanted world. But suddenly Zai realizes that the heart in the sky is getting bigger and falls on them. But Zai swiftly breaks it with his shield. Zai tells Chu to go, but they notice that their faces have changed. At the same time, Ning eliminates more students and wonders why so many students are coming after him. He suspects Jiang Tian might also be in trouble, so he rushes to find him. Suddenly Ning hears a roar and sees Wang running towards him, but Ning makes him fall by stepping foot in his way. Ning sees a blazing bear coming there and takes it down with a single shot of a high-pressure water cannon. Wang gets terrified of Ning and is going to slip away. Ning stops him and asks him where Zhang is, otherwise, he'll keep him from going. He informs Ning Chu and Zai, but he has not seen Zhang and assures them that he hasn't hurt any of his students. He reports that Zhang and Chu are bound by an enchantment of a class of student, and to break that, the person who made the enchantment needs to be found out. But in this bond, it's impossible to find the position of that person because it's a spiritual enchantment bound. Ning is shocked to hear that if a person gets into that bounds, their game is over. Once upon a time, in a country, the queen had a magic mirror, and she always asked it who was the most beautiful in the world and he always replied it was the queen. But until one day it said a girl whose hair was black as ebony, lips red as blood, skin white as snow, and her name is Princess Snow White. The class a student made choose Snow White in his enchantment. The queen angrily turns herself into a granny, goes to the forest where Snow White lives, and gives her a poisonous apple. Snow White took a bite of it and passed out. The dwarfs knew about it and found the prince because only his kiss could wake her. The class of student chose Zai for the prince's character and made him come close to Snow White to kiss her. But suddenly Chu woke up, and while getting up, his head collided with Zai's. Suddenly Zai also got out of the enchantment and asked why Chu was feeling dizzy after hitting his head. The class of student realizes they are a bit powerful as they wake up, so he decides to enchant them into another story in which a girl with long blonde hair gets trapped in a very tall tower by a witch. In this story, Zai is a prince who, while crossing the forest, hears the long-haired girl singing a song, and her voice draws her. Suddenly Zai gets to wake up again, and after getting up on the tower with her hair, Zai yells at Chu that they need to find the enchanter. The student tries to write the story forward. But suddenly, Ning's arrival with a question about what she is writing startles her, and she falls, but she lands safely and recognizes that Ning is class D's teacher. Ning tells Chu and Zai that they had already fought an enchanter before, and after hearing Ning's voice, they get attentive. Ning tells them not to embarrass him, so Zai immediately frees Chu from the hair, and they get out of the enchantment, and the enchanter gets shocked to see this. Zai furiously creates his protective barrier and expands it, making it difficult for the broadcasting helicopter to come closer to their location. Chu immediately grabs the medium Enchanter was using to write her stories, and her glasses also fall during that. She starts crying because they caught her, but Zai tells her to stop crying because they will not beat her and suggests she surrender. However, she again tries to bind them in an enchantment, but Ning drags them out, and she escapes. Ning tells them to hurry up because they need to find Zhang and others, and they search for others. Meanwhile, Zhu Zian, a teacher of class o eliminated a lot of students, and similarly, Teachers Ma and Yu Yang eliminated many students. Ma and Yu Yang are looking for Ning while Lai is still stuck on the tree, trying to save himself from Blazing Bear. After some time, the bear falls asleep, and Lai falls down the tree, but accidentally, he steps on a rubber chicken, and its sound wakes up the bear, and Lai gets terrified. Meanwhile, Zhu Jian, who can summon a chicken that knows how to crow, is hiding there, watching Lai getting beaten by the Blazing Bear but suddenly Shi Feng catches him and hits his head. Lai and she get happy to see each other and while running toward each other, they bump their heads into each other. Suddenly, the bear is going to hit them both, but she controls Lai and makes him attack the bear's hand. On the other hand, a giant snake attacks Cold Star's rock soldier but it grabs the snake's mouth and destroys it. She is shocked to see that it turns into ashes because it is a summoned animal. Meanwhile, Wang also appears there and says her summoning is still low level. Wang summoned a giant fighting beast that took out its sword to attack Cold Star's rock soldier, but it stopped the attack with its arm. The rock soldier tries to attack the beast with a sharp blade arm that becomes difficult for the beast to hold, and Cold Star takes advantage of the situation and takes out her new weapon. She throws glass tubes containing her hair on the beast and summons small but strong rock soldiers on the beast. They attack the beast size, but Wang manages to make his beast attack Cold Star's rock soldier, on which she stands. Cold Star fell, and her hair tubes also broke, but her summoned parrot rushed to eat them. Cold Star gets shocked to see that the parrot's transformation process has started. 
Upon witnessing the evolved form of Cold Star's bird and how it saved her from falling, Wang immediately commanded his beast to eliminate the bird without hesitation. Unexpectedly, when the beast tries to stab the bird, its beak shatters the sword. Despite this, Cold Star feels the bird has not changed significantly, prompting her to summon a flying rock drone. She swiftly gets on it and orders her bird to attack Wang's beast. Wang, perplexed by the bird's sudden disappearance, was caught off guard as it reappeared behind his beast, launching a surprise attack from behind, making it topple on Wang and resulting in his elimination. Meanwhile, while airborne, Ning, Chu, and Sai felt relieved to see Cold Star taking care of Wang, and now Ning worries for Zhang Tian because Class S teachers have some issues with Zhang. Simultaneously, Zhang and Gu launched an assault on Hong Ai Lin, but she skillfully evaded their attacks. As she prepared to strike Zhang with her sword, Ning intervened, stopping the weapon with his arm. Although Ning feels a slight pain in his arm, Hong Ai Lin is astonished to see him unaffected after getting hit by her sword. As Chu and Zai arrived on the scene, they were puzzled by the confrontation between Ning and Hong Ai Lin, standing face to face. Zhang is glad by Ning's timely arrival and curious about Hong Ai. Zai inquires Zhang who she is, but Zhang says he doesn't know much about her and that she might be Ning's old student. She yells at Ning that nobody taught her after she left, but Ning tries to calm her down. Meanwhile, Wu and Ma also arrive there, and Wu summons a giant octopus to attack Ning, but Zai creates a protective barrier to save Ning. The octopus starts to suck power from his barrier, and Ma taking advantage of the situation, launches an attack on Zai by breaking his shield. However, before Ma can strike again, Ning holds his attack and commands him to bow and apologize for hitting his student. Ning makes him bow, but when he tries to use this skill on Wu, his system unexpectedly displays an error indicating one day of recovery time. Wu immediately commands his octopus to attack Ning, but Hong Ai Lin swiftly severed its tentacles, shielding Ning from harm. Wu is shocked that she fought against him, but she remarked that a crazy student coordinates with the crazy teacher. She was swiftly scooped up the injured Zai and soared away in search of shelter. However, their escape was abruptly interrupted when an enchantment paper belonging to a class a student appeared in front of them. Hong Ai Lin fired a shot that seemingly missed Wu, striking the wall behind him. Yet, in a surprising twist, she swiftly appeared behind him, wielding her sword to slice through the tentacles of his octopus. Wu immediately summons more tentacles from the fallen ones, and she continues to cut them. Meanwhile, Ma gets up and tries to hit Ning, but Gu freezes his feet, and Zhang kicks him. It's becoming difficult for Ma to fight them, but Wu, according to his plan, calls Zhu Xu in there to help them fight. Zhu stood on the floor above Ning's students, and he smashed the roof on their heads, making them fall. 